All right, Doug, it's been eight weeks since we were here last getting ready for your opener against LaSalle. You're now entering the regional semifinals. How different is the elder team today compared to back then waiting to kick off the year? Uh, I think uh, more matured, obviously. You know, we came in with not a lot of starters coming back. I think guys have now grown into roles. Everybody understands, you know, what, what it is that their job is. And, and, and I think that's what's really kind of, you know, propelled us now to be where we're at. Well, you've had two close games in the playoffs and really different games, right? I mean, the first game you find yourself against Fairfield trailing by 11 in the fourth quarter, get a couple TDs, win 42-39. to And then last week at number two seed Princeton, the second half, hardly any scoring in the fourth quarter, neither team scored. While I know you feel great about the offense, I, you had to feel good about the defense coming up big last week against Prince. What about having two tough games like that in the first round and winning them both? Well, I think that's – well, as I said after that game, you know, I think our schedule, because of people we play, I think we're able to do those kinds of things. You know, I think it says a lot about your team too. And you, you think in, in both situations, you know, the Fairfield game, we're down two scores. We score, and then we have to get a stop. We get a stop and we score again. You know, to, to, to win that one. And then last week, they're driving to win the game and we force a fumble. You know, so, so again, it's situations, guys making plays. And, you know, I, I told him after that Fairfield game, there's a lot of teams I don't think would have – they that, that wouldn't happen for a lot of teams because they, they would have they given up and said, ah, this game's over. And, and I think that's where – when I talked about the maturity earlier, I think that's part of it. Our guys, they understand you play until the game's over because you always got a chance. And is that – I mean, it's got to make you feel good as a coach going into a matchup – like at St. Xavier. I mean, when you talk playoffs, Elder St. X, I mean, it's almost like I talked to Steve yesterday over there, and he said, yeah, you know, you almost factor that you're going to meet him again. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's been that kind of rivalry, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, no doubt. And we knew it. That when we walked off that field last time we played, I mean, like all of our, our notebooks and things that we had said St. X won because we knew there was going to be a two. We, we knew that there was, whether it was going to be the first round, second round, whenever, we knew that we were going to play them again. And because and we know that they're a quality team. We know we were, we, we felt like we were pretty good. So we know this, this matchup was inevitable. Now you do have a lot of different players. You won there last year, 28, 24 in the, in the playoff second round earlier this year, I got to believe you had them here and you probably feel like that's a game. Maybe you should have won. You were winning 10 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, 17, 10 in the third quarter then led 24-17 going into the fourth quarter, and they scored three touchdowns. What did you take away from that game, and what have you told your kids out of that game about this matchup? Well, I think that's. I think they took away more from the game than, than I did. You know, I, I knew how I felt. I think they realized, hey, there, there's no reason why we can't win. You know, I think being in the situation that we were, you know, having to lead, um, you know, then we had a we had a, a bad punt uh, snap and things kind of we kind of unraveled a little bit, and then I think that's the maturity thing. You know, I don't if we're in the same situation, I don't think that's going to happen now. I don't think we're going to have you know a breakdown like that and give the other uh, the other team an opportunity. So I, I think our kids believe um, they can win this one. I think our kids have been excited. It's kind of one of the things that we circled. You know, once we were done playing, we said we will do this again. You know, you guys will have another opportunity to play against St. X, and and when it comes, you know, are you going to be able to take advantage of it? Now I gave Steve a hard time yesterday. I'm like, look. I remember St. X football, three yards in a cloud of dust, play some defense. Boy, their, their offense, I mean, 55 points in the last three quarters against St. Ignatius. The last two weeks, 42 points in each of the first two halves. I mean, they're probably playing their best football of the year right now. Oh, there's no doubt, you know, because – Everybody forgets. You see their, their scores, everybody forgets how good they're playing on defense. Because, you know, you throw those numbers out, but, you know, Moeller didn't score an offensive touchdown in the first half. Walnut Hills didn't score with their first team. Go, you know, you go back to those games and teams aren't, they're not, they're not giving up a lot of points either. And, and, and so with their offense, what, what their defense being what they normally are now offensively, them being a, 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 a team that can score in a lot, a lot of different ways. I mean, and, and you look at them, their offensive line is mammoth. Um, their quarterback's a very good player. They've got uh, you know, a bunch of receivers, tight ends. They they use a six lineman to come in and unbalance offense of line. They they've got a couple of backs. They've just got a lot of depth, and that's what they're doing. They're doing a very good job of using their depth. Like they're subbing in like like crazy, um, and, and, and getting a lot of different formations and and kind of they're kind of taking advantage of uh, 
that and the fact that uh, referees don't touch the football. They're setting and going really fast and subbing, and, and, and so we gotta be we got to be ready for that. I know it's hard for some guys to talk about their kid, but you've had the unique opportunity to coach both of yours. And all three? All three, yeah. yeah. And, and Peyton has obviously went on to an outstanding career at Indiana, then transfer portal, graduated. He's now at Northwestern. And now you've got Drew, who's a junior. And, boy, i, I got to be honest. I mean, you look at the numbers every week. You look at the plays he makes. He does so many different things, really even both sides of the ball. What about his maturation as a player? I mean, and I'm guessing you're not surprised, but, boy, he's really putting up some outstanding numbers week in and week out. Yeah, he's been, he's been really, I mean, really special. It's, you know, whatever we ask him to do, he, he does it, and he can do so many things. Um, I, I, you know, I wish right now we could use him a little bit more on defense, but he has to practice a lot in the backup quarterback role. You know, I'd say, like, next year, you know, if, if I feel comfortable with somebody else being a backup quarterback, he'll he'll start on defense too. You know, just because he can bring so much to us, he he can catch, he can run, he can block, he can throw. Um, and then you know, last week a sack and a fumble, forced fumble and recovery. You know, he just he he loves playing the game. Like, he's like his brothers. You know, he's he's he, he he the the game is is a lot of fun to him. And when he plays, he plays as hard as he can. Final question, when you look at this game on Friday night, knowing the way the first matchup went, what do you have to do on both sides of the ball to win this game? Well, I think defensively we, we gotta we can't give up the big plays. I think last time they had they had two or three really long pass plays when we were in cover two, which shouldn't happen when we're in cover two. We gotta prevent the big plays. I mean offensively, you know, here's the deal. They're they're playing a little bit more two safety look. If they're going to play two safeties and we can't run the ball at all, we're going to be in trouble. You know, so I think if, if they do that, I think the first game we felt like in it, coming out of it that if they if they play us man coverage, we can get open. You know, but if they're going to play with two safeties, um, we have to be able to run the ball. If we can't run the ball, then it could be a long night for the Panthers. It is kind of funny you mentioned about being able to run the ball. I've noticed this year any GCL South team, when they're stopped running the football – even though they've got all this great talent on offense, it's been a struggle for everybody when they can't run yeah. it. I mean, I guess that's kind of, you know, you, I know you guys like to throw it all and, and you run a bunch of different sets, but, boy, when you can't line it up and run it, it becomes a problem, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, no doubt. And I, I think that's in the first game. That's what, what, what ended up happening to us as we got into the fourth quarter. You know, we couldn't run. Everything was everything was throw, throw, throw. I think we only ran for 19 yards the first go-round. So, so we've got to do a much better job of that this go-round.